hi. Um, so yes, hello, it is the 22nd of April, um, uh, which makes it day 33 of lockdown. We have been at this for 33 days. Yes. Um, we are in this room again. Um, we have had some time out of this room, um, uh -huh. but we have noticed that sort of uh, coming back in before bed is a good idea because Puppet gets a bit um, like she wants to escape. So <laughs> if we come in and film at the end of the day here, it means I have a chance of being able to go and sleep in the bed. Yes, and we actually had our dinner. We had a dinner downstairs watch and watched a film. film downstairs. It was all very nice. So we're um, just we did spend a fair bit of time up here with her yes. in shifts throughout the day. And we did um, have some family this games from so in here yeah. earlier. But we did get some time out of this room yes, together. She can be left on her own now for, for a spell. But uh, we also don't want to just leave her here just on her own and, and lonely and sad. So we are trying to make sure we do spend lots of time with her. Even though often, often when we are in here with her... She just sort of flops on the floor and ignores us. But then but when, when we go, we go like, and come back in, she's go? very lively and Guys, excited to you? see us. Yeah. And so, yeah, it's, it's a bit of a... I think she's more content when you're in here with her. Mm. Uh, but that does mean she just sort of sleeps and ignores you. Uh, but then I do feel bad if I've been out for a while and come back in and then she's all needy. Mm. Um, so, yeah, trying to spend a fair bit of time with you. But it does mean at least that we can sort of... I get a bit of time, a bit of sort of sensible time outside of the room and um helps keep us sane, doesn't yeah, it? Yeah, it's definitely an improvement on the last few days. Um but we're all things that hasn't had a poo though. No. <laughs> so no poos for puppet. She's uh she's been eating, so but yeah, we took like I said, it, we were at the vets. Uh, when, what day was Tuesday. it? Tuesday. Tuesday. Um and uh, what is it today? Thursday? No. Wednesday. Wednesday. We were uh, yesterday. Was it yesterday? Um, yeah. So yeah, he sort of checked her over and wasn't too concerned about that. Apparently, that's just sort of after the big heavy drugs and the lack of movement about. That's that's normal. Um, but bless her, that's the only thing that we're sort of. I'm glad we're not waiting on that because it seems like it's not forthcoming. <laughs> so there we are. That's the level of glamour that we are uh, living at at the moment. Uh, mm -hmm. Lots of chats about. Um, the toilet habits of my cat, but there we are. Um, so yes, yeah, so uh, that's that's besides the point. But she's doing well. She seems happy-ish. Uh, seems to be getting used to it. Um, it is now mainly just annoyed that she's locked in a room, um, which I can relate to. <laughs> I feel your pops. Um, but you know, yeah, she yeah. she seems to have got to the into the swing of it now. You know, I had a thought lockdown, the other she? day. Yeah. Kind of why. She, I've realised because they'll have had to shave all of her leg under that mm. dressing, but her fur will grow under that dressing. So I'm wondering if when that comes off, she's going to have really weird fur because it's all going to oh. have grown flat. Oh. Um, so yeah, because she's got a bald patch what on here. Do you think it stay weird? Uh, well, maybe, I don't know. Um, not permanently, but I guess for the. At first, I think it would probably. But yeah, she's got a bald patch on her arm, which I assume is where they put the stuff in her uh, vein to sedate. And she's also got another weird little bald patch here, which I'm guessing is when she's actually mm. been under the general that they put it in in a different place. Because uh, she has to be sedated for the x rays, but she has to ha we... have to go under for so the actual operation. Are we operations. on this? Uh, I don't particularly think so. Right. Okay. If we do look yellowy, we're not jaundiced or anything. We have been getting all our vitamins and getting some sunshine. It's just it's just the lighting in here. No. That's all. It doesn't look particularly yellowy to me. All but right. Anyway. Just, just covering all, covering our backs. All oh, right. Yeah. Well, yeah. Not jaundiced. Um, uh, it's not... going to accuse us of, us of jaundice. Yep. <laughs> oh, I'd be furious. <laughs> um, so, yes. Yeah, so what's going on? What did we want to talk to you about today? Um, um, I'll tell you one thing is... Since we've been mostly in here in this cat room, the Nintendo Switch has been an absolute godsend. Yeah, you have been on it a lot, haven't you? Yeah, because I can play on the sort of port ha handheld. It's not plugged in. We haven't got a TV in here, but it's got the handheld option. Mm. And uh, a game that I have been playing a lot is uh, called Bastion. Yes. And it's very it charming looking sort of action RPG where you have to go on adventure and fight monsters and all that kind of standard stuff and, and get upgrades and new weapons and kit and things. Uh, it's very fun, but it's only £2.50 uh, oh, or thereabouts on the Nintendo eShop. We've been playing it for a few days, so it must be I, a big-ish game. Or is it just hard? Well, I mean, I'm just not very good at games. No, <laughs> I looked it up on howlongtobeat.com, mm. and I think they said it's about 10 hours. Oh, okay. So, um, 
but yeah, it, it does depend on if you're any really good at it or not. I think, and there's you know, if you're a completist, all these different things. So, but it's yeah, for that money, it's not bad. And if you're looking for some entertainment during lockdown, it's probably on, um, you know, it's on PS4 and all the. I don't know what the prices are on other platforms, but it's it's not bad entertainment for not uh, for cheap money. If you like us, uh, um, sort good. of yes, reduced wages and things. Um, yeah, value for money, that, isn't it? Mm, yeah, that's not bad. So I'd recommend, that's a little games recommendation for people. I um, haven't been playing anything. I can't, like, I, I have actually went, before it kicked off with Puppet, I had just invested in a game, but it's a PC game. So at some point I will get back into that. I can't oh, remember what it's called now. Zoo, it's, it's, well, it's It's a zoo, like it's a zoo simulator. Oh. Um, it's not Zoo Tycoon. Um can't think what it's called uh but yeah it's oh gosh that's gonna annoy me now i'll have to check it up uh but yeah uh but so i've only been playing the tutorial on that but it was quite epic and um very involved so i can see me spending a lot of time on that but obviously that's not been possible because the pc is downstairs in the living room uh so i've mainly been watching tv type things so watching stuff on prime video um uh, i did used to have through my telly um Hey You, which is a streaming service sort of specialising in reality TV, which I do love my trash. Uh, they have recently taken that off my TV package, but I have just added it onto my Prime Video one. I'm doing the free trial at the moment, but I think it's like three ninety nine a month afterwards, which I might think is worth it, but I will see. Um, so I've been watching TV and uh, napping in here when I've been in here mainly. Um, oh, yeah. uh, Papa has been very kitschy actually, it's been very nice. So when I've come in, she sort of seems very happy to see me uh, and then comes up for kitches and a little sleep together, which has been really nice. Um, I think it's just, I think the pressure has been taken off a little bit just by knowing that if you need to pop out of the room, you can. That and just makes knowing... a big difference and not having to sort of coordinate every minute. And also knowing, because she, she's figured out how to go for a wee without weighing down her leg. Mm. Like when I was in here, even before when it was a worry that we might have to be in here to hoik her leg out of the way, mm. I just felt an, an awesome sense of responsibility of like, yeah. if I mess this up, that's going to be over a hundred quid. Yeah, having to be um, really on, so yeah, you couldn't really even really relax in here. No. Um, and I certainly wasn't sleeping well, because I think any, so I think I was struggling a bit because I had a fair mm. few days of... Uh, well, sleeping on the floor, it like we've made it as padded as we can, but it's not the most comfortable anyway. And I get a bit more achy and pain, achy and painy, uh, mm. anyway. But also any sort of movement from her, and I'd be awake. And so yeah, I think feeling a lot better in that sense now. So that's good. Um, and the next sort of seven weeks of her recovery aren't looking quite so daunting. Mm. Um, I, bless her, she's going to be climbing the walls <laughs> before long though, because yeah, she is very already... keen to get out. And it's, yeah, it's about another seven, like you say, seven weeks of that. Yeah, so I don't good. know if towards the end, when it, if it's healing really well, they might be like, okay, well, you, you, like, don't let her out of the house, but maybe she'll be allowed out and about a little bit more. I don't know, hopefully. But she, as long as she's healing well, eight weeks in the grand scheme of things uh, is worth it. Oh. We've saved the leg, uh, so that's yes, good. Because that, we've had the first vet check and the pins are all still in place yes. and it just seems like... Uh, Oh, a little bit of, oh God, yeah, that, that was, was a relief. That was you know, a big relief. Worst case scenario, wasn't it really, to have her on three legs, which is viable? It's viable, but, but it's, not ideal. No. And um, it was getting to the stage where if it had to be another op um, to try and re-sort these pins out, just be, I, I think realistically, not just because of the expense of another op, but also just the stress, the of, stress of another that. operation and, and also then restarting no another... That it was gonna... Yeah, it just wasn't really an option. Um, no. But uh, I'm glad because I think, although they're very, they adapt quite well to sort of... Um, um, amputations and things I don't, that's not the ideal is it um she's only five so it'd be good if she's got another several years with all four legs so that's all good um so that was a relief um so we're still it's still quite quite intensive we're still having to sort of do a lot of round the clock care and things but slightly less intensive and a bit more we, we can be a little bit more relaxed so that's that's all good on that front uh yeah um so um uh, well we did sit down and watch a film which was good it was quite a uh 
uh, hefty in terms of mind power needs to go into it. I think it's fair it to say. It was a thinky film. Yeah, it's called Coherence, um, which isn't very well known. I think it was quite a sort of low budget independent film, but it's, it's good, and it had it was very well reviewed. I was looking at the back; it got sort of quite critical mm. acclaim. Um, but yes, yeah, it's, it's it's very hard to uh, summarize it. Um, because we were doing the I chose three films and pitched them to Chris and then he got to choose out of the three and that's what he went for but it was hard to, to describe uh, basically it's 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 set at a dinner party um, but there's a sort of uh, astral event going on well there's a comet going overhead but this comet is causing um, sort of uh, what's the word like ru- Ructions, Ru- ruptures in sort of space time. Uh, so alternate realities are converging, and they shouldn't be able to interact with each other, but they can. And so it's very complicated and confusing, but very interesting. Um, and it sort of does play a little bit on the the psychology and philosophy of if you could meet yourself, would you want to? Basically, and, very quick to uh, leap to either fear or aggression. Yeah, I think, I would like to think that if I was in the circumstance where I was going to meet an alternate reality me, that I would sort of assume the best of her. Some people ended up in the wrong timelines, in the wrong houses, and they sort of were kept that, no one was like, hey, it's me, it's nice to meet you, I'm from the other... No, they were all just like trying to sort of not get caught. And... Well, I think there was also there were elements that they didn't realise they were. But at first, and stuff. But at it's... first we thought there were two houses, and then it then you realise that there's essentially multiple... infinite. And it, um... it got very confusing to try and follow this. this but it was film. Inter- it's a real thinker because I've, I've watched it once also... before a long time ago, mm. uh, and actually it's one of those films that I think you do need to see more than once. Unfortunately, I think I've left it too long between viewings, so we... I kind of need to see it again, again. But also. Uh, <laughs> We weren't drinking. No. And oh, it wouldn't be a, we're not a film to watch like, on the booze. You know, neither of us is immense, but we're not stupid people, I don't I hope not. No, I don't and think I, so. I just feel like maybe... How much is it? It didn't hand. It didn't hold your hand and talk you through it. It, it is it not be, one that... It does not um, patronise. It's complicated. <laughs> but if you're making a film, I think it should be on the filmmakers to kind of, to an extent, make it clear... I feel what like... The film you know. I feel like it was asking questions rather than giving you definitive answers, and no, I think that was a deliberate choice. Yeah, but not yeah, but asking questions is one thing, but being actually actively confusing about which <laughs> character is which and what's going on, yeah. I don't know. I, but I did enjoy it though; it was an interesting film. But what I will say is, I don't know who they had doing the camera work. Mm. I don't know if it was like an intern or a work experience kid or just a son of someone who worked on a production. Or daughter, um, but like I mean, it's nice to see people getting um, opportunities to have a go at something. Would it have been be- a better film if it had been if the camera work had been done properly? Sure, but I didn't even know you know that the camera work was particularly shoddy. I oh, thought it was just meant to be kind of it was wobbly and out of focus and all over the place and you know weird angle. Oh, it was you know. I think he's being a bit harsh there, personally, but um, I thought that was just kind of being this like. I'm in the room with them kind of vibe, uh, like sort of viewpoint of an imaginary person in the space with them is how I interpreted that. But that's what we've been doing this evening, basically. Um, yeah. I would recommend it. I think it's, it is worth a watch. It is a, it's a head scratcher. Um, and I'd be intrigued if anybody else has even heard of it. Uh, but yeah, it's, it's an interesting one. Um, so a couple of times we've been talking about Matt Hancock and we haven't finished talking about him and we've run out of time because I generally speaking start getting very angry mm. uh, <laughs> so there were a couple of things that we didn't quite finish talking about uh, with Matt Hancock so I think we'll get it out of the way now while we've got more than half of the podcast podcast what is this vlog vlog vlog, vlog thing <laughs> well we've got some of this left um so uh what did you want to talk well, about with him Matt Hancock uh he was asked if MPs should take a pay cut. Yes. Oh, I should mention, I don't know if this was uh, in response to or separate to, but Jacinda Ardern, who is the, I don't, I'm not sure if they're prime ministers or if they're 
presidents, but she's the leader anyway of New Zealand. Uh, she has, it seems, handled all of this like a boss. Oh. Um, and uh, they announced uh, recently, over the last week at some point, that all um, MPs and government uh, workers were going to take a 20% pay cut in solidarity with everybody who's having to go through tough times. I'm sure that's, I'm sure they get well paid and actually taking mm. a 20% pay cut of a massive salary is still quite tasty compared to most others, but it's a nice gesture, certainly. Um, and I don't know if this question to Matt Hancock was spurred by that or if it was just separate to that, but he was asked, uh, would you contemplate... Oh, cause it, I think it might have been in response to because they were given an extra... 10,000 um, mm. uh, allowance in yeah. expenses to cover the fact that they're now working from home, which I think that stuck in a lot of people's craw quite a bit. Now, t it has been slightly misreported. People have reported it as though they're getting an extra 10 grand. They're not, but their expenses budget for office running costs has been uh, given... An extra, an extra 10 grand that allowance claim. that they can claim. I mean, certainly, though, it's still a case of a lot of us would be yeah. a lot better off if we could claim. Well, about, essentially, I don't get to claim those costs to make my business work from home. They just have to come out of the I business. I could make profits. more money from home if I could I earn get a laptop for £10,000 a year. That's that's the wage that I take. So when they're just going, oh yeah, you can send an extra ten thousand to work from home for the next three months, it's a bit like I'm sure you could do it for a lot less. Than, how much? How much more can it cost you to work from home? Everybody's already got PCs and like broadband. Well, like it seems a bit heftier than can necessary. You not, can you not make do with the things that you've yeah. got? Like I've been, I can't go out and do any stand up comedy gigs. No, I can't make any money or income that way. So. What I've been trying to do uh, in the last week or so is write some um, freelance articles that I can hopefully make a bit of money from. And um, I've been doing that literally on my phone. Yeah. So, and that's very fiddly sometimes with the little pulls. Yeah, I don't know how you do it on in. your phone. And if I had, you know, an expense account, I could just claim a laptop. That would be You wonderful. would, wouldn't you? you know, and, yeah, and if I could... could... give me a grant to kind of cover me on the laptop to keep my income yeah you know and, and i make less if much, i less yeah if i, I had an extra 10 grand to dip into i could mm. perhaps buy stock that we could then sell through the escape rooms that's like escape room related puzzle games or mm. something so that we can make some money while we're in lockdown but i don't have that fun to dip into most people don't so i think it understandably sticks in people's craw a bit um because it does like well that's an advantage that you're giving yourself that you're justifying, but everybody else isn't getting that advantage. And again, it just feels a bit tone deaf. So this, like, so then I don't know if it's to do with that, but he was asked, uh, do you think um, MPs should take a pay cut at the moment, being as a lot of people are effect effectively having to either, well, a lot of people have lost their jobs entirely, mm. um, but even those who've been furloughed uh, are on 80%. Uh, people who are self-employed, it's a bit trickier. It sort of depends on previous year's tax returns, which aren't necessarily a reliable judge for how much money you would have been earning this year, but that's the best they can go on. Um, and did he just, he just we didn't said entertain said no, the notion? He said, oh, no, we're not to considering that week. I'm working every hour. Uh, but I can. We'll, yeah, we'll know, just work and, and, harder. And working hard. Which, I mean, this might be a controversial uh, point of view, mm. particularly if people have been watching all of these and we're pretty quick to kind of uh, criticise. Mm. And the government and, and people, but I don't necessarily think that MPs should take a pay cut specifically because of this. No, I wouldn't. I feel like, you know, yes, a lot of people are furloughed and they have lost money, but there are also people who are doing their jobs from home mm. who are on just as much money as they usually are. Yeah. And they're able to work from home and, and good for them. That's great. But MPs theoretically should still be working. Yeah. And I imagine a lot of them are working quite yeah. hard, you know, I actually, and they're working from home, they've got a lot of questions to deal with their, from their constituents, they've they, got to keep they must be working harder than they normally the do. the current situation on and top of everything they normally deal with. This is also uh, not a popular opinion, but I actually, I do think 
it's kind of like MPs do work really hard. Like mm. their their job is difficult. Um, just the amount of work and travel that they have to do. Like they do get a lot of bad press because mo to most people's ears, you go seventy nine grand a year is loads, and it is. Mm. It is loads. Um, but yeah, you do have like it. it it's a it's a hard going job. They have a lot of work to do. I and to also an extent, you do want to incentivize like intelligent well qualified people to go for that job because yeah. it can be quite a thankless job in some yeah. ways and if they're just going well i could be an mp but i can make a better life for I my could, family i, I doing might be better off being else. a banker or being a lawyer or but, whatever and you sort of think well but yeah. the actual mp's wages like whether they should be paid or not uh you know that's open to debate but i, I do think like if they're still doing their jobs and working hard from home if they are doing that then they I don't particularly see that they should take a pay. I don't. I don't think they should get extra expense allowances on top. I, I don't, don't think, think they, they necessarily should a take rise, a pay cut. I think but, it would be a nice uh, gesture. Mm. Um, for example, with the ten thousand allowance for expenses, I think it would be a nice gesture if MPs went. I will foot those costs myself. Yeah, I mean that's donate a different that thing. Money though, I don't to, think they like should. Like I, I think they. I'm not saying. Like, I don't think they should get any extra expense allowances. I don't think they should get any bonuses or pay rises right now. No. Um, but a pay cut when they are still doing their jobs. And and look, also, um, yeah, they are, they should still be doing their job. That is not to say, and, and yes, a lot of them are working very hard. But there is a difference, obviously, between working hard and doing a good job. Mm. Like, you could be working really, really hard and still screwing everything up right? yeah i think so, there might be a lot of that going on yeah so and so mps might be working hard but they we still need to be holding them to account for the quality of the job that they're doing and certainly some of the uh more ho high profile ones in government uh, do not seem to be the, the cabinet at the moment are glory. absolutely as far as i can tell it's, it's um i watched yesterday's press briefing a little bit after the fact mm. i watched it on my phone a little bit later on um and one of the main well there's lots of things that they're coming under fire for and rightly so i think if, if ever a time you should be holding your government to very close scrutiny it's a time like now oh. um and the daily press briefings are starting to feel a bit propagandary and a bit less um like they're really being used to sort of uh, scrutinize the government really uh, but one of the things that was uh, brought up to them in yesterday's um was they uh, said in the briefing, uh, they made a big point of saying we've ordered another billion items of PPE, they're getting delivered. Um, but uh, like, and then somebody quite rightly pointed out, like, well, you, you say you've delivered a billion, but how much do they need? And it's more than a billion. So there's still shortages. Um, another thing that's been thrown at them is that um, various companies uh, have offered or, or either already have uh, PPE equipment or have offered to make PPE equipment and they've offered it to the government and many different companies have said they've just their emails and phone calls have gone unanswered and unresponded uh, and this was put to Matt Hancock yesterday uh, and he skirted around the question he basically bullshitted saying oh ultimately yes we we have had offers from companies but we had to but you have to bear in mind we had to sort of scrutinize the validity of these offers some of those companies for example as it turns out had only just been like uh been registered as companies days before and they were hoping for a cash deal i don't maybe that like maybe that is the case that some of them are just dodgy offers because people are trying to make a buck off a good government contract but ultimately, there are companies who have got or have had a huge amount of PPE that uh, they've, they've offered to the government first. It's been in the right country and the government have not responded. And they've ended up, they are businesses and there's a global shortage and businesses need to make money. So they have ended up selling them to other countries. Uh, and they and we aren't talking like piecemeal. We've been talking like millions of items that would have been helpful. And that seems to have been cropping up from a number of different sources so i don't think that sort of conspiracy theory stuff well, going on there's a report that came out there's sorry, sorry. no carry on well, there's a report that came out in the last couple of days mm. that was basically saying with the ppe and then and the ventilators all the stuff that the government was saying oh there was a mix-up and there was you know and now it's 
the reporters sort of saying no, they were, that's kind of spin, and actually there was kind of... Somebody did say no, it was a political decision. It was a political decision to not get this stuff. And then you're going, well, there's no... Either you believe the report, that it was political spin, and they deliberately chosen not to do the best thing for us, or you believe the government's take, and in which case it was incompetence. I mean, there's no... Neither is there's good no enough, good, is no. it? Uh, another thing that came out today, um, which was uh, very sobering, mm. and from a very legitimate source, the Financial Times. So I, don't, I think that's probably the most serious of broadsheets, isn't is it? it? Yeah, it's pretty. Is that the one that's on the pink paper? Yeah, the FT. Yeah. Uh, so that's proper grown-up newspaper, uh, that is. Uh, that's a legitimate source. What? There we go. Uh, oh, you're grinning at me. Uh, so that, but that's that's like that's a proper outlet. That is not some random dude on the internet. Um, they uh, have Excuse done a study, me. which um, I think it was in today's paper that came out. Uh, it might have been yesterday's paper, and I've seen it today. I'm not sure, but uh, they have done their own study into the death rates uh, in the UK. The thing that has been being said all the way along, all of our death figures have been based on hospital deaths only, and they have said that they haven't been pretending that there's no other deaths. They've been saying this is what we're basing this on, um, but. The FT have done this study and they've come up with the number based on um, figures that they've got through the Office of National Statistics, based on death certificates, uh, just number of deaths reported total and of those which ones had um, COVID-19 on the death certificate. And so that will include people who've died at home, people who've died in care homes, um, everything basically, uh, which does have a lag in reporting compared to hospital deaths which is why they've said they've been using the hospital deaths only, because that's the most present uh, data to use. Um, the number, so the, the current figures that the government are giving, which are the hospital deaths only, are just over the 18,000 mark now, which is sobering enough on its own. But the FT figures uh, estimate, uh, oh, and it sounds like fairly solid um, statistics they've gone on, that they think the true number, as of, I think, today or more possibly yesterday, is 41,102. Um, and that's based on death certificates that have been that have gone through the Office of National, National Statistics, which I always struggle to say. Mm -hmm. um, so 41,000. And when you bear in mind, currently, um, we do. it does seem like we are past the peak. Uh, is good that yeah. seems to be this but we are still dealing daily with death figures in the seven to eight hundred mark every day uh, and that's the hospital deaths that we're getting so although we might be past the absolute maximum that we'll have in a day we're still it's not coming down really it's it's sort of gone and now it's totally along with quite high numbers still um and uh that's we don't know how long that's going on for People are already making a bit too much noise about when do we come out of lockdown. I'm like, well, not yet. And actually, how we come out of lockdown is going to have to be very slow and steady, I would have thought. Because if you just uh. suddenly relax everything and go right back to normal, all you're going to have is it's going to shoot back up again straight away and you'll have a second peak. And you may end up having multiple peaks. If you, if you do all or nothing, that's what's going to happen. And we're already at tens of thousands of people dead um which like that's terrifying and another thing that is important to mention is that early on in this we were being told that it's almost exclusively old elderly people or people with underlying health conditions that's obviously horrible anyway i'm quite fond of quite a lot of elderly people and people with underlying health conditions um but it isn't just those type of people that are dying from this. There are very young, otherwise fit and healthy people and many, many healthcare workers included in those statistics. And they are young, fit, healthy people um, who are catching this, getting very sick and, and dying of it. And it, it's also, it seems like it's quite a slow process. <laughs> You don't just sort of catch this on the Monday and you're dead by the, the Wednesday. It's you, you have a gradual decline and it attacks your body in a horrible, horrible way. Um, so this is all pretty scary. And I think it's important mm. to remember that we are still because I think we've got a bit used to lockdown and we're, so, it, we're a bit numb to the figures. 
Um, but the idea of relaxing lockdown actually scares me quite a lot because yes, I think so... we'll have a second wave and with, say, for example, the Spanish flu, the second wave was far worse than the first. First one killed off two to three million people. Second wave, 40 million. Um, they're huge We've numbers. We've got like a minute left. Ah. Shall we uh, change track and end on something a bit positive? Uh, well, uh, that seems like a plan. Yes. Yeah, so, uh, good news is Charlie Brooker... Uh, who you may well know from a uh, news wipe and screen wipe uh, and Black Mirror. And, well, Black Mirror. Well, this is the thing. He was uh, kind of a, becoming. He was a journalist, and he kind of became a TV personality and presenter. I think he started and as a games reviewer, didn't he? Yeah, he worked, worked for, like games magazines and and uh, kind of became like a, a host of TV shows where he kind of satirized stuff and talk about how TV was made and he's then very entertaining about, and he's scathing. Very, yeah, very and funny dry. and really funny. good. And and he's gone on. Just to greater and greater success, uh, making things such as Black Mirror, uh, that has become this massive kind That's of international a phenomenon, concern, yeah. uh, a Netflix show, and very successful. And you know, good luck to him. Like he seems like a genuinely nice, I love him. Uh, person. I think he's brilliant. Yeah. Um, but he it does mean that because he's been off doing those incredible things, we've kind of lost him from our TV screens as a kind of presenter and personality. Which was actually my favourite. Yeah, I loved his sort of version screen wipe, news wipe, him, you know, and wipe of the year, the year, year. What was the wipe year? of the year? Yeah, what was I the year? They used year to call of... it like 2016 wipe. Yeah, or something, the, the, the year, year the end of the year fact, wipe. 2016 was actually the last of those. Oh. Uh, but he's now uh, going to do a special anti-viral wipe. Anti-viral wipe is yeah. the working title. So um, we're going to see him and all the characters don't, like don't Philip Nicholson yes. and Barry Shippies. That you, if you've seen his show stuff. You'll recognise those names. If not, we might run out of time. Tune in. It's going to be great. Anyway, so that's when happening. we find out if there's a date um, for that, we'll let you know. But yeah, keep an eye out. So that's a bit of good be great. news to end on. Yes, I'm looking forward to that. That yes. will be brilliant. So, uh, so yeah, that's us for today. Um, right. So we will see you tomorrow, maybe from downstairs. Maybe, maybe, maybe. Bye. Not. Bye. <laughs>